Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the effect of placing a price floor on a perfectly competitive market and in particular I'm going to be going through changes in market outcomes and also changes in any welfare distribution as a result of imposing a price floor. So before we look at imposing a price floor, let's just have a look at what's happening without the price floor so then we can compare the two scenarios, right? So here I've got a perfectly competitive market in equilibrium. We have P star, which is at equilibrium price, and we're going to be trading Q star, which is at equilibrium quantity. At this point, the quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. So it's the case that the market is clearing. To measure the welfare of this market, so how we measure the benefits to the consumers and producers, I'm going to think about consumer surplus and producer surplus. My consumer surplus is going to be the area above the price underneath the demand curve. And the reason being is because as we consume up to Q star units, the price that our consumers are paying uh, is going to be lower than the marginal benefit, uh, which is described by the demand curve. So every time there is a gap between the price that we pay and the demand curve, which is comes from our marginal benefit or our willingness to pay, then that's going to be consumer surplus. Our producer surplus is going to be just that bottom triangle and here we're going to think as we're trading up to Q star units, the price that the producers get per unit as they're uh, selling, selling their goods, the marginal cost, which is represented by the supply curve, is lower than the price that the producers are getting. So every time there's a gap between the supply curve and the price, or when the supply curve is beneath the price, then that, that counts as producer surplus. Good, so let's see what happens if we impose a price floor. And let's just say that I put in a price floor so my price can't go below a certain amount. And let's just say that that's above the original P star. So that's our price floor there. Well, the first thing to note is that there is going to be um, different quantity demanded than quantity supplied. So we're not at a clearing price, right? To find the amount that will be demanded at this price, we just have to look at the intersection of the demand curve with the price floor. That will give us some Q subscript D. And to find how much will be supplied at this price or the willingness of suppliers to, at this price to supply, we find the intersection of the price floor and the supply curve and we get some Q subscript F. So here it's the case that the quantity that we're willing to supply as producers is a lot larger than the quantity that our consumers are willing to demand at that price because the price is pretty high. Now, in terms of what will actually be traded, it will be the lower of the two, right? So it will be um, that quantity that I've, I've now got as QD. And of course, we'll have that higher price P uh, superscript F. So now just think about our consumer surplus and what's happened to it. Will we still isolate that area below the demand curve above the price? That's consumer surplus. Our producer surplus will still be the area above the supply curve below the price. It's producer surplus. Good. And so now we can compare the two outcomes in terms of welfare. Here I have just a flashback to what it was before and now. And we can now compare the differences. Now, one big difference is that there is an area that is now blank and I'm going to color that in black and I'm called, going to call that dead weight loss. Now, that's our loss of surplus. That area used to be either consumer surplus or producer surplus. So this loss of surplus, this area that is no longer surplus, that's going to be our, our dead weight loss. Now we can see also that the producer surplus has increased in the vertical direction and you can see that actually the producer surplus has taken over for some of the consumer surplus. So some of the consumer surplus has transferred to the producers and this is really intuitive because now it's the case that the producers are getting a higher price than they used to, right? Now the consumer is paying a higher price than they were before the price law was imposed and also they're consuming less. So their consumer surplus is unambiguously going to decrease as a result of the price flaw. Mm -hmm. Lastly, of course, as we've spoken about relative to when we weren't interfering with the market, the quantity traded is less and the price is of course higher. Now that the price floor has had so much impact on the market outcomes and also the distribution of our surplus, just goes to show that this price floor is making a difference 
and that is it's what we call a binding price floor. We might think of a case where a price floor would not make any difference to the market outcome and that's going to be true if the price floor is set beneath the original equilibrium price P star. And the reason is because at P star, the quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. So actually there's no downward pressure on the price at this point. To say that the price can't go below P superscript F isn't saying anything because as we've described it, there's no reason why the price should want to go below PF. So this is a non-binding price floor and in this instance, the market outcome and the welfare analysis is going to be exactly the same as if we didn't place a price floor in the market. Okay, I hope that helped. That's price floors in perfect competition. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying studying economics. Please check out my channel, have a look at my other videos. Please like, any comments are appreciated and subscribe. Have a great day.